feeling pretty good. Got here a little early today. Met this cool lady, and I was like, hey, I'm doing this comedy show up at Theater 99. And she's like, do you play the, Jew, uh, the Drew Carey? And then she's like, because you look like I'm just a little fatter. So I was like, you know what? You kind of look like Rosie O'Donnell, just a little more butch. I love Charleston, though, man. It's been a while since I got here. I got to go to one of your gentlemen's clubs last time here, Jaguars. Wow. They should call that place Hippos. <laughs> it was cool, man. It was like Halloween, and all the girls were dressed up, and there was this one girl on stage. She had like a halo and wings on her back. Cutest girl in there. She was like 3, 325, right around there. And she got off the stage and started walking towards me, and the first thing I thought, I was like, this girl's going to need some bigger wings to get to heaven. <laughs> and then the closer she got, it got even creepier. And the light, fresh C-section scar right there. And I didn't want to be mean. She was like trying to be cute with the hail on the wings. So she was like, guess what I am? I was like, kangaroo? <laughs> Kick me out of there. Beat me up. So I went to Walmart, man, trying to buy some band-aids. They don't sell flesh-colored band-aids anymore. It's all like Betty Boop and Spider-Man and Batman. I think you ladies did that to us fellas to make us look like pussies when we get hurt. I think it's time to get you back. Do it to your tampons. Like a Spongebob tampon, wouldn't that be cute? That'd be the best commercial ever too, right? The guy comes out and he's like, who lives in a vagina under your jeans? <laughs> you guys do the other part, all right? You guys say Spongebob tampon, we'll do the whole commercial, ready? All right, three, two, one. Who lives in a vagina under your jeans? So big and fluffy and absorbent is he. He covers up odor in feminine niche. <laughs> Love it. Well, I got engaged this year. Yeah, she's a great girl. She called me the other day, though. I got out of the shower, and I was, like, flexing the mirror naked, trying to find a nap. And I thought she was going to make fun of me, but she walked in, and she was like, baby, you know what? You got a pretty dick. I was like, that is the sweetest thing I've ever heard. But then I started thinking about it. I was like, well, how many dicks have you seen? I mean, to be a connoisseur of fine dicks, you got to see a lot of dicks, right? Guess not. <laughs> oh man, that's crazy. She's a cool, cool girl, though. a little redneck. I was away doing some stuff out of town, and I came back, and she's like, I got a surprise for you. Sure enough, she tattooed my name Jeff right there. I was like, shit, I guess we're getting married. <laughs> but then she wanted me to do something to show my love to her. And Michelle's a pretty long name, and the penis is pretty sensitive to get a tattoo. But it kind of backfired, because when I just stand there normal, it says Mitch. <laughs> and when I get scared, it says me. <laughs> and on a cold light night like tonight, it says mmm. <laughs> yeah, she's a cool girl, man. <laughs> I went through a lot of crazy girls, though, to get to that one, man. I dated a Spanish girl for a while. Yeah, she was Ndoko. One of the most beautiful girls I've ever seen in my life, but she was also one of the hairiest women I've ever met in my entire life. She used to walk across the room naked, sound like she was wearing corduroy pants. It was like, woof, 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 woof. I was like, you building something in the other room, baby? She was beautiful though, man. I remember the first time we ever made love, she looked up at me and she had this tear rolling down her cheek and uh, she whispered something to me in Spanish. It was so breathy and so sexy. It was like, Mochica Patana. And I didn't speak Spanish, so I looked it up afterwards and was like, man, I can't breathe, you tubby bastard. <laughs> Still sounded hot. Foreign languages sound hot, man. I remember my fiance, first time we made love, we were spooning afterwards and she's like, say something sexy to me. So I remembered ninth grade German. I was like, ich liebs du. And she's like, what's that? I was like, that's I love you in German. She's like, that's hot. She's like, you know any other languages? I was like, I know French. I was like, shut the one on. She's like, what's that? I was like, I love you in French. She bought it. So just then, she started to drift off my arms. Her breathing was slow. And I just whispered in her ear. I was like, don't want to Jumped out of bed, she was like, what the fuck was that? I, like, I love you in Cantonese. <laughs> I love doing comedy though. I started thinking of other things I would like to do. 
I'd like to get in broadcasting, like the Weather Channel. That'd be a great job, right? Especially that guy who gets to name all the hurricanes. You only got to work like four months a year, get to come up with all the cool names like Bonnie and Katrina. They had Tropical Storm Gaston. Turned out to be nothing because the French are pussies. <laughs> It was 2010. We got a black president. Don't you think it's time we have a black hurricane? Like a Hurricane Shaniqua? Wouldn't that be great to turn on the Weather Channel and it's like, Hurricane Shaniqua turning out the Atlantic this hour saying, yes, we can. And then they go live to Steve, and Steve's always that poor bastard who gets hit in the face with two by fours at 100 miles an hour, and he's like, as you can hear from the booty clocks of thunder behind me, Shaniqua is pissed. Charleston better get ready because Shanique was going to hit it like it owes her child support. Back to you, Ted. Thank you guys very much. I'm Jeff Martin.